Hey everyone, so I've decided to do another ASMR video but I first must apologise for any background noise that you can hear. I have waited all morning to try and do this. I've done various takes. But my upstairs neighbour is a neighbour from hell and he does not stop screeching, singing, and it's not singing, it is screeching. And he plays very loud music. He's been playing it since 7am this morning. He was playing it until 1am the other day. So there really isn't a good time for me to try and sit down and do these videos. So fingers crossed he's quiet just now. I hope this goes to plan. So as you can tell I'm doing another close up. So hopefully the audio won't be too loud or too quiet. And I had the idea for this video when a few people commented on my soft spoken poetry videos that you really enjoyed the videos but your favourite part was when I was rambling about absolutely nothing as opposed to when I'm actually reading out the poetry. So for those of you who like those videos, don't worry, I will still be doing poetry readings. But today, as you can tell by the title, I thought I'd do a ramble video all about films. So I'm not going to be saying anything particularly important in this video. So if you are watching this purely for relaxation or listening to it for relaxation and you want to just listen to the sounds rather than what I'm saying which I often do myself when I'm listening to ASMR don't worry you won't be missing anything important if you kind of zone out I often zone out during ASMR videos that's why I enjoy them so I have a list of films every film that I watch gets written down in this book I've been doing this since October last year and it's just a way of helping me remember films for inspiration because my memory's not the best and if I'm you know, having writer's block I will look through this list of films or through the list of novels that I read and I'll read a film title and that film will suddenly come back to me and any inspiration I gain from that at the time you know, particular character traits I enjoy or settings that I thought I could use will come back to me. So I think it's a really effective way of doing that. Plus it kind of pushes me to watch um, a greater number of films as I really enjoy making lists and I like adding to this lists. So whenever I watch a new film and get to the end of the film I get really excited that I can add another film to my, my list of films that I've watched which uh, may be sad and a bit odd but it, it helps me gain cultural experience I guess and you know it's a great way to be introduced to new directors and new actors and new writers I'm subscribed to Love Film so a lot of the films I'll be talking about today um, I've probably had from Love Film I, I think it's a great service even when it's changed to being in partnership or owned by Amazon it's still very very good so I'm going to talk about some of the films that I either loved or hated over the last possibly three months I think I won't discuss them all but I'll just talk about the ones that I think were particularly um, noteworthy for reasons either good or bad but I will still be doing my kind of two monthly highlight films videos in non-ASMR for those who enjoy that and my neighbour is banging again so I hope you can't hear that if you can I will edit it out uh, as best as I can when I'm listening back to this video so there will be some occasional page turning in this of course so I think we'll start with April May and then June because it is July but as you can see I've only currently watched two films this month and yes my handwriting is appalling I know so we have Tinkerbell and the Pirate Fairy and then V for Vendetta and both of those I really really did enjoy and I will talk about those at a later date, either in my next ASMR video or when I do my highlights. 
so if I turn the page again, I'll go back to April. And in April, I watched three, six, seven films, which is not the greatest number. Um, I have procrastination issues when it comes to things like that because I always think, well, instead of watching a film, I could read a book. But then when I'm reading a book, I think I could be watching a film. And it's such unnecessary turmoil that it drives me insane. In April, one of the major films, or trilogies, I watched is the Warrior Trilogy. Yeah, you may not count those as films. You may consider that to be a three-part TV series. Personally, I consider it to be three TV films. Page 8 was out, out, out in 2011 and Turks and Caicos and Salt in the Battlefield were both out this year. I thought Bill Nye was fantastic as Warker. He really was wonderful and it's made me want to go and watch other things that he has done. Annoyingly, he's in London. I'm not sure if he's in London just now doing theatre, but he definitely was last week and we only found out about that when we went to London. Had we known in advance, we might have booked London, booked to go to London when he was there so we could go and see him in theatre, but never mind. Um, Helena Bonham Carter was of course wonderful in that, but I'm slightly obsessed with Helena Bonham Carter. <laughs> as I'm sure you can see there, so I am going to say that. But I did really thoroughly enjoy that trilogy and as soon as the price goes down I will be buying the box set on Amazon. I think it's currently about £17, maybe a little bit less now. It's still full price in HMV, which is you know, painful, <laughs> but never mind. So, I also watched The Big Wedding. I didn't really enjoy it. I only got it because Robin Williams was in it, and I really love Robin Williams. I'm really excited to see him in Night at the Museum 3. I love the first two films. I'm going to re-watch the first two ahead of that one being released in the cinema. I'm not too sure when it's out. I think it's out this year. But I really, really love Robin Williams. Um, my favourite, all time favourite film alongside Sweeney Todd is Dead Poets Society. I know some people will know that if you've been subscribed to me for a while, but Robin Williams is brilliant. But The Big Wedding was a bit of a disappointment, to be honest. I didn't really enjoy it. Now, I got that from Love Films, so it's not as if I spent any money on the DVD or anything, but it's still a shame. The only new release I watched in April um, is Transcendence and it is amazing. I didn't really know anything about it before I went to see it. I just knew that Johnny Depp was in it and let's be honest, that's as good of an excuse as any to ever go and see a film. Johnny Depp's face on a film poster is gonna get my attention. So I went to see it with a friend and I came out with love in my heart for that film. It is so good. I don't think the DVD is out yet, um, but if it is, or when it is, or if you're on Love Film or whatever, I strongly urge you to go and get it if you haven't seen it. It's quite um, intense a lot of the time. It uh, makes you think a lot about things. It's all about technology and how if we, tr if we push the limits of technology too far and try and make them too human, at the same time eradicating the essence of humanity and making machines like humans, it, it well, it, you know, as you can imagine, it has potentially severely damaging effects. I'm not going to say much more about that because I don't want to spoil the film for you, but I really, really enjoyed it a lot and somebody had read the plot description to me I would have said no that's not for me but I, I went to see it and it was great I'm very slowly learning my lesson with that not to judge a film before I've seen it 
I used to be really bad for just watching kind of one genre of films, thinking I wouldn't like the others, but it turns out that I actually have a broader range of interests than I thought, so that's really nice. Um, so we're now on to May. Let's see if there's anything interesting to discuss in May. Okay, so in May I watched five films. I'm probably going to watch quite a lot towards the end of this month as we have a, a backlog of DVDs to get through. And I've just broken my notebook. The um, back cardboard bits come out the collars. I'm sure it won't take long to fix that. Um, so one of the films I watched in May is A Matter of Life and Death, which was um, released in 1946. I'm pushing myself to watch a lot of older films. I find that I really enjoy them. I'm not the biggest fan of silent films and black and white films take a little bit of getting used to unless it's Greta Garbo. I love Greta Garbo. Queen Christina is just, oh, she's beautiful. It's incredible. And But A Matter of Life and Death is a very spiritual film. Um, it's about a pilot in the war who was supposed to die but for some reason he lived and it's all about trying to work out whether or not he deserves to live or if he should have died when he was meant to. Um, it sounds sinister, but it's not. It's quite beautiful. It's occasionally comical because of one character, but it's it's, um, it's a very nice film. It's, it's well directed. You can tell it's an old film. There are certain frames and certain shots where it's just so obvious, but it's quite well done. And I really did enjoy that one a lot. I can't remember the name of the director off the top of my head, but um, I will get round to getting that information at some point. I also watched Francesco, another Helena Bonham Carter film, and again, I really enjoyed it. It's a biblical film, and being a spiritualist, I like anything that is holy. I like that sort of thing. For educational purposes, if nothing else, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a little bit long for my liking, but I also have reviewed that, um, so that will be on my Helena Bonham Carter Tim Burton playlist if you wish to see what I said about that in more detail, as I do, of course, talk about it in more depth on there. I also watched Horrible Bosses. 2011 film and I am so excited that there's going to be a Horrible Bosses 2 and that Jennifer Aniston is going to be in it again because I love her. You know I grew up watching Friends. Well I watched Friends since I was about 12. I think I started watching it in 2004. I used to watch it on Channel 4 in the mornings before I went to school. Um, which means I've been watching Friends for a decade, which I know is not as long as those who have been watching Friends since it first aired 20 years ago. 20 years ago. But, you know, a decade of Friends is quite a long time, and I've started watching it again. Because my partner had never seen it, so we're now watching kind of one or two episodes every day. And we're currently on season two. And the last episode I've just watched was the one with the lesbian wedding, which is a good episode. I like Carol and Susan. particularly enjoyed Jane Sibbett's career. I liked her in um, It Takes Two with Mary Kate and Ashley. I thought she was very good in that. And of course she's in the Witch Right, Witch right Hall episodes of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. So she's good. Um, yeah, Horrible Bosses is so funny. It's one of those films that I've wanted to see for quite a long time. In fact, I wanted to see it in the cinema in 2011. I think it went to the cinema. I, I wanted to see it when I first heard out about it. And I never did. And I never got around to getting the DVD. And then once we signed up to Love Film, I put it in the normal priority list. 
and then one day they sent us it and I got so so excited and so funny I just think the outcome of it is so unexpected and the script is brilliant it's fantastically directed I have absolutely no complaints about horrible bosses at all and I also watched Pee-wee's Big Adventure Tim Burton and it is just wonderful it's a very bright and colourful film and I do admit that the kind of often slapstick nature of the comedy is not my idea of a good film I do not particularly enjoy slapstick at all but there's a lot of craziness in it a lot of things that are just so out of place that it's wonderful and it's a very entertaining watch and I think you can kind of see Tim Burton's character baked right through the heart of it especially the set design the props department must have had so much fun with that film it's incredible and the last film I watched in May is Elizabeth the Golden Age and I got this for research for something that I'm writing I got it from Love Film for research and I don't know I didn't really enjoy it as much as I thought I was going to now don't get me wrong the costumes are great nothing wrong with the script it's pretty well directed the acting is fine. I just don't think the story gripped me enough. It's about Queen Elizabeth I and her relationship with Sir Walter Raleigh, which fascinates me. It really does, and I'm, I guess, a die-hard fan of Elizabeth I, if I can say those words in a sentence. And it was interesting, you know, for the most part it was good, but I think by the halfway point my attention was just wandering and it just wasn't enough to keep me engaged. So for research purposes I got a bit out of it, but for entertainment purposes I just, it didn't click with me. So that's all the films I watched in May. And then we have the June films, which is one, two, three, four, five, and every single film that I watched in June was an instant hit with me, which is really rare. Granted, there were only five films there, which is not a lot, but I still really thoroughly enjoyed every single one of them. So the first one is Maleficent, which I've told about in a video where I've reviewed it in more detail so I'll try not to say too much here but Maleficent is gorgeous now what really makes Maleficent special for me is the fact that it has sparked this newfound interest in Angelina Jolie before Maleficent I wasn't that bothered about her I didn't dislike her don't get me wrong but I'd never really been taken by any of her roles that I'd seen or I wasn't really interested in watching any of her new films. But Maleficent is dark and beautiful and powerful and a true femme fatale character and I love her. And you know, Sleeping Beauty is the only Disney princess film that I like or classic Disney princess film. I love Brave and I love Frozen. but. Sleeping Beauty is the only original that I can kind of get on board with and Maleficent of course is a big part of that and Maleficent is very much Sleeping Beauty from Maleficent's perspective but there are a few alterations to the story so Angelina Jolie is perfect in the role but what I really enjoyed about this is the directing. I thought some of the scenes were magnificent. The fairy land is just so beautifully well done that you just want to go there in a heartbeat. The castle scenes weren't that good, but um, it was good. And um, Elle Fanning was, she was all right as Aurora. I didn't really have high expectations for the character herself, you know, Aurora has never been 
my favourite Disney princess in terms of the personality. But it was definitely one of my favourite, if not my favourite, Disney princess film. So that's good. Um, I also watched Now You See Me, the 2013 film. And I didn't think I was going to enjoy it because I don't like sleight of hand, I don't like card tricks and unless it's Penn and Teller but I love Penn and Teller for their personalities but I didn't think I'd like Now You See Me but when I watched it I really couldn't take my eyes off the screen oh, it's got a great cast and Morgan Freeman's in it and it's just addictive the final scene, I didn't. I thought the final scene was a bit out of place and a bit unnecessary um, so it kind of ruined it a tiny wee little bit but for the most part it was just a spellbinding, incredible, sensational I guess the cheesy word to use here is magic the film really was something magic and I urge everybody to watch it I then watched American Pie because I went, when I was in London, we went to see this woman being recorded. I'd seen it being recorded in 2009, so I wanted to see the new set. And it was just absolutely incredible. And there was a lot of American Pie relevance because Jason Biggs was in the audience. Um, on the panel, sorry, he was being interviewed. And of course after that I had this biggest craving to watch American Pie again and it was wonderful and little known fact Lord Byron is in American Pie try and spot him next time you watch it I'm not going to spoil it although I do think I posted a picture of it on Facebook so you may have seen what I'm on about but Lord Byron is in American Pie also, I didn't realise Alison Hannigan was in it because the first time I watched American Pie was long before How I Met Your Mother. So to watch it and then see Lily in American Pie is quite bizarre and very exciting. Um, it was a very funny film and very entertaining and I haven't actually seen any of the other American Pies. I think I've seen a little bit of Band Camp none of the others so I'm looking forward to watching the rest. Now Love Film have a very funny way of doing things. They set, when they send you, they, you two random DVDs from your list they try and pair them. So we asked for American Pie and the second disc they sent us matched up with American Pie is Life of Pi. Pi not even spelled the same way. I don't think that was a coincidence, but it did make me laugh. And Life of Pi is so much better than I expected. I kind of thought it wasn't going to be for me. I knew it had a lot of praise for the direction, and rightly so. And I kind of wish I'd seen it in the cinema, because some of those scenes on the big screen would have just been incredible to watch. But I didn't unfortunately but it's still absolutely sensational on DVD and I recommend it to everybody the whole Richard Parker thing the name Richard Parker just made me laugh quite a bit um, and that's not even a highlight so it really is an incredible film and definitely worth more credit than I'd given it before I saw it so thanks to Love Film for pieing Pie and pairing Life of Pi with American Pie. Odd match, but very happy with it. And then the last film I watched in June, and I guess the last film I'll be talking about is T.S. Spivet. Now, again, because this is a Hannah Bonham Carter film, I have viewed this in more detail on my channel. But uh, T.S. Spivet. I'd waited for for so long. It's been out in other countries since last year and I was itching and itching to watch it online but I refused. I'll wait till it's out in the UK and finally it came to the cinemas here. Distribution is appalling. It was in very few cinemas but lucky for those that 
did get to see it because it's a very good heartwarming film. I won't say too much about it here because, as I said, I have reviewed it. All I will say is that the boy who plays T.S. Spirit, whose name I can't remember off the top of my head, is very good. And, of course, Helena Bonham Carter is beautiful, as always. Um, she's very good in this as well. She's an interesting character. Um, not my favourite of her characters, but probably one of my favourite of her characters from the last few years. Which is quite a big claim because she's had a lot of good roles recently. You know, she's had Madame Thénardier, um, she's had Margot Tyrrell in the Warwicker trilogy, which is great. And she had Elizabeth Taylor. Just trying to look at my DVD collection and see what films. And um, Miss Havisham as well. Yes, of course, Miss Havisham was fantastic. Before that, uh, Dr. Hoffman in Dark Shadows. And before that, I think it might have been Harry Potter. 2011. Might have been the final Harry Potter film. But Bellatrix the Strange is one of my biggest loves ever. She's just sensational. Um, but unfortunately, that's the end of this video. Um, if you are still with me and still listening, and if you haven't fallen asleep, though I dare say if you have fallen asleep, one, you won't hear me saying this, and two, good. Because I, I think it's, it's good when an ASMR video has the abilities to relax somebody so much. You know, it's, it's nice that my rambling might make somebody sleep. It's the only time I'll ever say that. But if you do have suggestions for other ASMR videos, let me know. If you suggest something, I will give you a shout out in that video at the beginning to say thank you for suggesting for suggesting for suggesting that video. And um, not just ASMR videos, normal normal videos as well. I'm not sure if I can legitimately use the word normal there. Non ASMR videos. Let me know what you think of this style of video and if you like the rambling nature of me just talking about films that I've watched or you know whatever I could do a kind of films I'd like to see thing with my initial expectations and then do a follow-up when I've watched them I, I have a lot of ideas but I'm more interested to know what you think and what you would like and what you enjoy because I don't get ASMR from my own ASMR videos get relaxed slightly but I don't get ASMR from listening to the sound of my own voice. But let me know any suggestions or random thoughts or you know let me know what films you've watched recently and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!